full time here at Parky Creep and it has ended Waterford 327, Clare 318. Shane Dowland, you were watching the game for off the ball. What did you make of it? Yeah, I, I, to be honest with you, Dahi, I think it went exactly as I thought. Waterford were nine-point winners, uh, and I think they were very, very comfortable for it. Every time they seemed to get a bit of a run on Clare, Clare seemed to come back uh, with a goal. But in fairness, at all times, like I was looking at Liam Cahill down here in the sideline that was directly underneath me, at no stage rarely did I see him get wound up, maybe in the first 15 or 20 minutes. But after that, even every score that Waterford got, every score that Clare got, he was totally different today than he was in the Munster final. I'd say he even knew himself that they were always comfortable and even like Clare got it back to a couple of points at a number of stages. But I don't think they were ever in real trouble. They were always seemed comfortable. Clare hit them with a couple of sucker punches, but that was really it. Waterford start to the game. Debbie Hutchinson, two early goals, two goals in the opening 10 minutes. How key was that for Waterford to settle into this game? Yeah, it was, it was a massive start. And like Desi Hutchinson, Desi Hutchinson, even I was watching him with Belly Gunner this year. I thought he was immense. Like, you know, against Limerick last week, the very, very first ball he got, he turned Sean Finn in a sixpence and put the ball over the bar, but it was kind of star for ball after that. I thought he was immense today, but he got two goals, but outside of that, the third goal that Jack Fagan got, like he got the ball, he could have tapped it over the bar, but that's what I love about teams. And I think it's kind of what Cork lacked in this year's championship is when there was goal opportunities on, they were tapping it over the bar, but Waterford weren't doing that today. They went for the juggler. Like it was nearly like he'd eyes in the back of his head. He popped the ball back to Jack Fagan and he still the ball into the net from Trini Ali Renadin, he was that close, like you know. And I loved that, that about Waterford this year, and Dizzy Hutchinson was key today. That first half over, overall, though, Shane, it's where we were in Tatro Park. It was like being on a roller coaster, you know, Waterford going up by six points at one stage, Claire coming back, and as you said, Jack Fagan. In terms of the first half, why couldn't Claire? Why couldn't Clare uh, kick on to Clare in, in the second half? Because I think if you were to look back at, at the first half, you know, the first goal that Clare got, it was a well-worked goal, and, and I'm not discrediting Clare here. David McInerney ran down the middle of the middle of the fence. The ball has popped into him, and an overlap was created. He popped the ball off to Aaron Chanaher, who, who got the goal, obviously. The second goal, there was no science, there was no tactics behind it. It was old school, Pearl Harbor job. Puck O'Kane to the centre-back. He launched it into the edge of the square. Great skill from Aaron Chanaher. He's, he's so good at he's definitely one of the best in the country in terms of feeling the ball and it's a skill that's kind of gone in the game because the quality of the defence is so good but he rose like a salmon turned and stuck the ball into the back of the net Stephen O'Keefe probably a small bit disappointed but I just thought that you know they were hitting a, lot, a load of long ball where Waterford were working the ball a lot better and at no stage even when I was looking at the game did I think they were going to drive on and win the game I just thought Waterford were working extremely harder and on top of that Waterford forwards were working way harder harder than the Clare forwards and Clare were struggling to get out of defence number one and then to deliver quality ball into their forwards number two. Tony Kelly obviously was the, the main man for Clare we were looking at today. What did you make of his performance? I know we saw it there in the first half he went over on his ankle and you know was he right? We don't fully know but overall how do you think Waterford coped? Yeah, and listen, when, when he went down, I suppose I was I was worried that you know the dreaded knee, of course, you know that people get so many injuries now, and he looked to be in severe pain, and I thought his day was over. But thankfully, he got up. After that, I was keeping an eye on him. At no stage did I see him limping. At no stage did I see him going down with the ankle again. He was moving at full throttle. Jamie Barron got man of the match. He had a great game, but no disrespect to him. My man of the match was definitely Callum Lyons. He was doing a man-marking job on Tony Kelly. He was phenomenal. He was absolutely brilliant all through the game. And also, a big turning point in the game, don't forget, is in the 60th minute, Waterford were five points clear. Aaron Cunningham got the ball, and the minute he got it, I turned around and I said, this is goal anyway, because I think he's a high-quality player. What an unbelievable save from Stephen O'Keefe. If he should have saved one in the first half, he certainly made up for it here. Great save. That could have brought it back to two points or ten minutes ago. Could have been a different story. Ball saved out to Jack F um, to Callum Lyons, right? And Callum Lyons straight over the bar and made it a six-point game. So on top of his man marking excellent, he chipped in the scoreboard as well. Phenomenal performance from him. For Waterford next, it's an All Ireland semi-final meeting against Kilkenny. What did we learn from them today? That will make us think they can actually go on and win that game against Kilkenny. I learned I learned nothing new about Waterford today. I, from the very first game I saw them play against Cork I, I just thought they're a serious outfit they're as close they're as close a team as I've seen that come 
in, in, in terms of the same style as what Limerick do. Their Waterford works very hard, they turn over a lot of ball and they work the ball cleverly from their defence to attack. You know, the same the last day against Limerick, I thought they were very good. If there's one thing I'd have to nitpick on a small bit, they were, they were better here today against Limerick is their full forward line was starved of quality ball the last day. Maybe that was credit Limerick because of how hard they worked. But I think the next day, I think Crow Park will soon have even more. You know what I mean? So I think they're going in against Kilkenny and I think they're a serious side. I like I like the way Liam Cahill uh, carries himself. I like the way they play. You know, and um, yeah, I, I think Waterford are serious all early contenders and I did from the first from the very first game this year. Well, you're talking about the work rate of the team, the team working hard. What exactly is it that Waterford are doing what are they doing right when it comes to work in America? Yeah, and, and I think the, the way the game has gone, an old style forward, their 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 job was to score, right? Not anymore. The the the, the, the defense works with your forwards now, and that's a that's a saying that can be thrown around the place. But if you study that game. I, I don't know exactly, but if you were to look back and see how many sharp puckouts were turned over on Waterford. So Aver Quilligan did a number of sharp puckouts today and Waterford worked extremely hard and turned them over. They definitely got three or point, three or four points from the puck out alone. But in general play, they tackled, they got tackles in from behind, they hooked, they blocked. There was always a runner off the shoulder. That's hard work as well. When you see someone's isolated, they always had that runner off the shoulder to pop the ball to the man coming at pace. That resulted in scores as well. And while they got three goals today, they could have certainly got more. And that came from the hard work initially and then hard run running from the water from midfielders and half forward line to get them into position to carry the ball through that's what hard work is and finally Shane the other semi-final you're beloved Limerick coming up against the man you know so well Shane O'Neill how do you see that semi-final goal? Yeah, well, listen, I think I came in for a bit of crit- criticism from uh, off-the-ball viewers last week when I said that I didn't think Tipperary were going to win the All-Ireland, so at least I got that part right. Uh, yeah, listen, Limerick versus Galway. Sure, listen, um, Shane O'Neill and his coach, John Fitzgerald, too staunch, the Piercing men, uh, going to have a lot of the Piercing representation next week, so that alone is going to it, is going to make it so interesting. Uh, I, I think the best four teams in the Championship are, in the, in the last, are, are the last four. I was very impressed with Galway against Wex, I was very impressed with them against Kilkenny last week as well. How did they lose the game? I suppose a bit of Richie Hogan magic got Kilkenny back in and whatever way you want to call it. But Galway versus Limerick, Galway are an extremely physical side. I think their forwards are top class and I'm no doubt they'll want to get revenge on Limerick after what happened in 2018. But um, for Shane O'Neill and John Fitzgerald, two good friends of mine, but I really do hope that uh, the Napier men are going to lose out on this occasion.